Hello and welcome to another Excel VBA tutorial. So in today's video, we are going to talk about how to create a chart inside of Excel using VBA. This will be a multi-part series just because the chart object has a lot of different components to it that we can manipulate. But in this particular video, we're just gonna kind of introduce ourselves to the topic of working with a chart and seeing kind of different properties and methods that um, you know we can use with it. So the goal is very simple. Um, we wanna take this data right here and convert it into a chart uh, using VBA. We're gonna start out very simple and just do a, like a clustered bar chart. So uh, ideally it would look something like, where are my charts? You know, something more than likely like this. Um, I think there's clustered bar charts. So basically something like this. So we, we want to create a chart that would look like this, but we're going to do it using VBA. So with that being said, you can already tell that I have my workbook open and I also have my VBA editor open. If you haven't already, you would want to right click over here in the VBA project pane. Uh, you want to make sure to insert a new module. And then after that, we can get started. So we'll create a new subroutine. We'll just call it something very simple. Uh, we'll call it create chart. And then once we've done and created that subroutine, we're going to declare some variables. Uh, we're only going to declare two in this video. One is pretty intuitive. We are going to be working with a chart object. So we want to declare a chart object variable. This will make sure that we can leverage IntelliSense and also just make sure our code is a little bit um, intuitive and a little bit more concise. We'll see later in the video, but we'll actually declare some more variables. But just to kind of get started, we'll just declare these two. And then the next thing will be something called a data range. It's simply a range object. So a range of cells over here. Uh, this is going to be the data that is going to be used to populate our chart. So we'll learn very quickly a chart is just an empty object. Um, we need to put data into our chart if we want something to actually be seen. So the first thing that we need to do is we're going to add a chart object. Uh, this will be an empty shell. You'll see that very quickly. And so to add a chart, we're going to set our chart variable object equal to the active sheet. So the sheet that I currently have open in my workbook and I'm currently uh, have my cursor on. I'm going to call the chart objects collection. We've worked with this collection before. This is simply all the chart objects for a given sheet. And then we're going to call the add method. And there's a couple parameters that we're going to pass through. These are all dimensional characters. So these are just specifying the size and the location of my chart. The first one will be the left. I'm going to make sure that these are on separate lines just so you guys can see each one. The next will be the width of my chart. I think I have that set equal to 400 as well. Uh, the next one is the height. That is set equal to 400 as well. And then the final one is uh, down from the top location. So the top of my sheet, uh, how far do I want it down? And then that I'll just put at 50. Okay, so if I run this, you see that we get this nice little empty shell. There's nothing in it, but we can clearly tell if we select it that we get new two, uh, sorry, two new ribbons that pop up. Then that's just simply telling us it is a chart object but right now there's no data inside of my chart. So let's add some data to it. The first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to define that data range. So define and add the data range to the chart. And so we'll set our data range object equal to range, we'll put it in a bracket, B3 to E7. That is simply these range of cells right here. So B3 to E7. And then once we have that data range, we're going to call our chart object. We're going to go into the chart property. We're going to call the set source data method. And then we're going to just pass through one parameter. It's called source, and that will equal our data range. This will be our data range that we currently have. So if I run this, uh, it basically it puts the data in here but it puts it to the default chart that what it is. So this one is a stack clustered you know, column chart. 
maybe I want a, a clustered bar chart. So uh, right now it's just defaulting to the default chart that we have set, but let's do a non-default one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna define the chart type. And so this is very straightforward. We call the chart object. Again, we call the chart property, and then we define the chart type property and we get a list of all the charts that we can use. So there's obviously a bunch of charts that we we can choose from. Sorry, it kind of popped away for a second. Um, you can see there's different ones we can do. Some are box whiskers, bubbles, uh, cylinder, columns, histogram, a lot we can choose from. In this example, I want something very simple. I just want a Excel bar clustered. And so when I do this, it's almost identical to the chart I have uh, that we saw before, but now they are facing uh, hor uh, horizontal, if I remember correctly. I think that's how you, you would say it. So same concept, but we just kind of flip the axis where we're showing the chart. So just a different way to show the data. Okay, so we have a chart, but you know what? I would really like a title on my chart, so let's add a title. So add a title to the chart. Again, go into the chart object, call the chart property, and then we're going to say has title property that will equal true. So if we set this equal to true, it will have a title. And we can see clearly when we run our code again, this definitely has a chart title now. So that's great. But we got a chart title. It would probably be better if we actually had it be something meaningful, meaningful instead of just chart title. Uh, so if we're going to work with this chart title, let's make our lives a little bit easier and make sure that we can make our code a little bit more concise. And what we'll do is we'll create a reference to that title. And from here, what we'll do is we'll create a new variable. We'll call it chart title. And that will be equal to a chart title object. And then so if once we have that reference, we can create a reference to it. And that will be set equal to the chart, the chart property, and then the chart title uh, property. So that returns the chart title object. And once we have that, we can do some formatting. So do some formatting to the title. And just different ways we can do it. Uh, we could do something like this where we just call the chart title. We'll call the text property and we can say, hey, we just want it to be performance, right? And so if I run this, we can see that the chart title now says performance. To make my code a little bit more concise, I can say with chart title and then I'll say end with, <clears throat> I'll delete this, tab it in just for clean looking code. And then now I can just set the different properties about it. So maybe I don't want a shadow. Um, maybe I want to work with the characters. I want to work with the font of the characters. And I want it to be bold. So you know what? I do want it to be bold. Or you know what? Let's turn off the bold because I think it's bold by default. And then we'll do again the characters, the font, and maybe... I want it to be something different than Calibri, so we'll just do Arial Nova. <clears throat> and then this is, again, all going to work with that chart title object. So all we're saying is with this particular object, set this property, this property, this property, and this property. And we can see right here, hopefully, that, that that's different. So you can tell here it's Arial Nova now. Um, it's not bold. So if I bold it, this is how it would look. So it's not bold um, and there's no shadow. Well, usually there's no shadow by default, so nothing really changes there. But again, this is just showing how we can take a chart title object and do some different formatting with it. Uh, now that we have a title, let's add a legend. So we'll add a legend to our chart. Again, go in the chart object, chart property, and we'll set that has legend property equal to true. Now, by default, we have a legend already, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense to kind of just add something that's already there. But what we can do is if we wanted, we could 
uh, change the position of that legend if we wanted. And the logic is very similar to what we're doing up here. Let's just create a reference to it so that way we can write our code a little bit more concisely and then just make it where we're not having to kind of uh, reiterate certain you know words and things along that nature. So what we'll do is we'll create a reference to the legend and we'll say dim chart legend as a legend object and we'll set chart legend equal to chart chart property and then we'll go to the legend property that returns the legend object and then now we'll just do some formatting so we'll say do some formatting and you know what i'm going to tab this in a little bit sometimes when i just work with an object, I kind of like to make sure it's just indented so I kind of clearly see that this kind of all belongs together. Some people would say that doesn't make sense, but I think it, for me at least it helps kind of clarify things. So uh, let's take our chart legend and then we'll call the position property. And now we get a list of all the potential positions. I want mine to be at the top. So we'll say, hey, let's put that at the top of our chart. And then from here, we can specify the height of our legend. So we don't have to have it be the default height. We can always call it. We can call the height property and we can put something like 40 if we wanted to or something like that. And so what we'll do, you can kind of tell it, it it's, you don't really see anything unless we had borders here, but this is definitely more than the default size. And now we can see that the legend is here at the top, vice over here on the right side. So that's just working with the legend a little bit. Let's look at a couple more examples and we'll kind of call it quit for this particular video. Uh, something I hate about charts are grid lines. I do not like grid lines a lot of the times. I think they get more in the way than they help. So I like to remove grid lines. So I like to take my chart object. Uh, a different thing we can do is we can set an element. So our chart has multiple elements. We can always set those individual elements if we want. And so what we can do is I can say MSO element primary category. And then if I do control J, I can see a list of all the different things that I can uh, set about it. Now, sometimes there's a lot to choose from. So you kind of know, have to know where you're looking at. Um, in this particular case, I want this to be grid lines, none for the category values. And then what I can also do is I can take the set element, and I can say MSO element uh, value grid. I think it's that one. Oh, wait, no, primary value. That's what it is. Primary ver value grid lines, none. So I'm saying, hey, turn off the grid lines for the value section, turn off the, val the grid lines for the primary category. Um, and then what we'll see with this. Now we have no grid lines on my particular chart. I personally like that. I think it looks cleaner. Some people would disagree, but I'm going to fight back on that one. I'm just kidding. Okay, so we removed some grid lines. Let's make sure that they have some axes. And then what we'll do is we'll maybe change the values of those particular axes if we want. So what we'll do is we'll make sure it has some axes, make sure the chart has some axes. It's usually there by default. It's usually true by default, but sometimes it's not. And so what we'll do is we'll go to the chart object. We'll go to the chart, and then we'll go to the axes method. We specify which axes we're talking about. In this case, we're talking about the category. You can have a primary and a secondary axes. We want to work with the primary one. And then we're going to just say has title equals true. Now, just for simplicity's sake. Ooh, not that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this to value. So you have a value axis and a category axis. And I want to make sure both of these axes do have a title. And then what we can do is once we make sure they have an axis, so I'll just run it to be safe. We can see that there are some two axes right now. They just say axis title. So nothing very meaningful at this point we can take a particular axis object and then we can change the values of it. So this is how it would look. So uh, create a reference 
to a single axis. And what we'll do is we'll say dim uh, axis title as axis title. Technically, this is poor naming convention. I like, let's just do that one. We'll do axis title equals chart. Sorry, the chart object. We'll go into the chart property. We'll go in to the axes method and then we'll specify the category one. I want the primary category axes and then I want the axis title. So the title object from that. And then from here, we will do some formatting. First thing we probably would want to do is we can take the axis title, we'll change the text property to equal years. At least I'm pretty sure that's years, that particular one. And then from here, I can set the horizontal alignment to be equal to Excel center. This is usually the default one. And then we can do the axis title. We can go into the characters property, into the font property, into the color property, and then we'll set it equal to red. So I want my title to be red. Um, and that's just doing some basic formatting. And we can see that it did exactly what we were expecting. So it now changed the axis title for my category section to be years. It centered it, if it wasn't kind of already there to show to begin with, and it changed its font color to red. So with that being said, I think this is a nice introduction to working with charts. If you have any questions about kind of what we covered today uh, when it came to, I'll move this over a little bit, to working with a chart inside of EVA, please put them down in the comments below. There are going to be more videos that are going to be coming with this particular series because there's a lot we can do with charts and you can learn very quickly that there are sometimes many ways to do the same things. So uh, we'll try to do some examples where it's like, hey, we wanna work with the axes. What's the different ways we can work with the axes? But I think this is a nice way to say, hey, here's a basic chart. Here's just doing some basic stuff. And then we'll kind of go on to do the more, uh, I would call it the nitpicky stuff about changing values, data labels, uh, changing uh, value series and, and things along that particular nature. Uh, so definitely, if you have any questions, you want to make sure you put them down in the comments below. And also, if you could, please make sure to like the video. We always appreciate the support. And if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we continue to release new videos related to VBA and Python. Um, I'm going to try to keep doing more of the VBA stuff. I do have the Win32 Comp stuff coming up too. Um, there was just some stuff that I want to kind of get out there uh, along with some different categories and topics. So thank you again for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video.